we are back with John Ewing. John, that was uh, fascinating talking about Xenon Pictures. Um, you still have a relationship with that gentleman, Lee? Uh, not as much now. I haven't spoken to Lee in years. Um, but, uh, you know, I know Lee has gone on to do many, many great things. He's actually one of the writers for a project called Straight Outta Compton. Um, he was oh, wow. One of the writers executive producer, and he was actually a uh, uh, nominated for an Oscar. So they didn't win, but he went on to accomplish many great things. And I, I hadn't spoken with him in years, but, you know, I'm always pulling for him because he's one of the initial people that helped, you know, pretty much give me my start. Had it not been for his advice to, you know, look, don't worry about, you know, spending your money invest in a film first, learn how to sell first, because you're a good seller. Once you do that, it will help you once you, um, you know, produce your own films. And it, it, that, it was fantastic advice. And, you know, I can't thank him enough for it. Wow. That, just a really, really interesting story that, um, and it, it just comes down to sometimes relationships can really get the ball rolling. Quick, quick aside, you said you um, started out with a cheap Walmart camera um, you have something in common with the Blair Witch Boys, these five <laughs> young producers from University right. of Central Florida who had no money. They mm -hmm. actually got their camcorder from Best Buy for like $300, mm -hmm. and right, they were right, so right. broke, they actually kept the receipt, and they returned the camera after they shot <laughs> the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> so you're, you're in good company, and okay. great things have happened to those guys. Right. You got to you got to start from humble beginnings. The Bible talks about not frowning on humble beginnings. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I would just, you know, if it was mud wrestling, I'd videotape it. Anything crazy going on, I would videotape it and I would meet with the guy, the gentleman from the Video Software Dealers Association trade show that had started the company. That company is actually called Be Design. Um, it's bedesign.la. That's their website. They do some fantastic work. And I still work with them to this day. They would take, you know, my documentaries and earl some of the earlier stuff that I had done, and they would just make it look like it was something that was coming out of Sony um, and Warner Brothers. So I would feel like that was the comp one of the competitive edges that I had, Scott, you know, because... I would actually get my product into Walmart by myself because wow uh, yeah yeah I can't I ha actually hired a VP of sales that worked for a company that had distributed over 200 films and uh, you know he actually gave me insight on how to get my product into you know a host of different major outlets and it, it actually worked to my advantage, you know? So I think in one of your uh, podcasts on, on film financing, you talk about proximity equals profits. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that, that, that really stuck with me. And when I heard it, it resonated because my proximity to this gentleman, um, it definitely, you know, converted into me having the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of how to go about getting product place, you know? So um, it, I'm definitely thankful for him for it. Wow. That, and that, that's the holy grail. I'm, I'm going to do an episode here pretty soon about how the DVD Blu-ray market is not dead. Now, it's declining. Mm -hmm. right. There's, right. there's no argument right. about that. But there's it's still fine. some money on the table that um, independent right. filmmakers should not overlook. Right. Um, absolutely. So uh, obviously you got some of these things with um, some cable, I guess, uh, BET, some of the, uh, the movie channels, cable. Yes, sir. You, did you actually get some, uh, a few net, Netflix deals as well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've sold uh, about, well, I shouldn't say I sold, but my films were about five of them were sold to Netflix. So uh, for people that don't know, my projects have aired on BET, Stars. Showtime, Encore, Netflix, and they've, they've done very well. Yes, sir. So you actually got a little bit of money up front from Netflix? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, we got a significant amount of money from Netflix. Excellent, from excellent. Because yes, not every deal there is, is good. And would, would you say you're a preferred vendor there now 
uh, like you have an open door where you could possibly take a project back into Netflix? Uh, yes, sir. Possibly. Possibly. Um, yeah. The way some of this works for people that don't know, um, like the first project that got into Walmart, it was called Three Dimensions of a Man starring Clifton Powell. It was a stage play. It, it, you, it doesn't really work like traditional business. Um, Scott, if you had a business um, in Los Angeles, I could just go and pull up and just knock on the door and just walk right in and talk to you. Well, Netflix and Walmart and these film conglomerates, they don't necessarily work like that. You have to deal with someone that's open with them. And when I mean open with them, um, you know, I remember specifically calling Blockbuster about 15 years ago. Remember that giant Blockbuster? Yeah, and, yeah, I got, in, um, I got into all their stores with one of my movies. <laughs> I asked them about, hey, I'm a producer, yada, 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 you know, I want to sell my project, blah, 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 and it was really quick, a quick no, um, we don't deal directly with producers, so what I had learned from the gentleman that I had hired from the, from the company, uh, that you have to deal with people that are open with these guys, meaning they're going to bring this company 12 to 24 films a year, because it's an accounting nightmare for Blockbuster or Walmart or Redbox or BET to deal with every single producer on the market. They would literally, their business would just be cutting checks. That, that's, that's all it would be. So um, I dealt with a company called uh, Music Video Distributors, um, better known as MVD. And MVD was open with everyone, you know? So when you have someone that has a relationship with all of the buyers, um, you know, it was literally, they were open with Trans World. I think at the time, Trans World was Sam Goody, uh, FYE, um, uh, Target, Target is still here, Walmart is still here, Virgin Records, they're now defunct, they're, they're out of business, and there were a ton of independent video uh, retail and rental stores. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Um, Yes, yes. And I actually contacted the gentleman uh, at Walmart Anderson directly and told them, okay, if you decide to buy the product, I can get it in there to you from through MVD. My contact at MVD, his name was Dave Hall. I used to deal with Dave Hall. And I believe the owner over there is either Ed Seaman or Tom Seaman, their father and son. I, I can't forget. I mean, I can't remember right now, but um, he actually placed an order and I shipped 5,000 units wow. to Walmart. And I, I thought it was very unique. And, um, you know, Good so some, you. Of those, yeah, some of those lessons that you learn early on, just the structure of the business, it's just a, a mountain of, of help. Um, yeah, invaluable. You know, just sort of knowing the structure of how business should flow. So once it came time for me to broker my distribution deals and whatnot, you know, I was pretty knowledgeable in how to do it. And when you're a hands-on investor, I cannot lose. I, I, I value the art and, and that's very important, but I wholeheartedly believe without investors, artists don't get an opportunity to be artists, you know? So yeah, you're, you're I, like, you're yes. like me. You have a, you have a, a, a huge respect right. of other people's Absolutely. money. I think it's a, Absolutely. it's a big responsibility once you start looking for other people's money and with you, with your track record and the fact that at this particular movie you're not jumping up to a million two million dollars i think your half million is a very conservative uh very smart move to make yeah. sure that this film gets out there and I, I have every bit of confidence that you will be successful so I, I got a couple of ideas for you to actually go out and get the money uh, the first, first of all, and, and um, you, you seem like you're a sharp enough business person to understand the, the numbers. It, mm -hmm. It's nothing more than a numbers game because if you reach out to a bunch of quali – first of all, you can never qualify or pre-qualify unless you actually have their checkbook. You have no idea who might have just gotten an inheritance, who might have just gotten a medical settlement from an insurance right. company – who might have won the lottery? True story. Right. I missed somebody that won over $10 million in a lottery because I prejudged wow. them. Yeah, that was wow. a bad mistake. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. 
So it's all about just reaching out to your circle of influence and, you know, a certain amount of them are going to say, yeah, okay, John, we'll, we'll take a look at the business plan. And then a certain percentage of those people will actually write you a check. But I've got one other idea for you that I think could work really, really well uh -huh. is whether you do something in South Carolina or whether you do something in Atlanta where you're going to shoot is I think you should have kind of like a house party or a movie night okay. and, you know, just have some light hors d'oeuvres, maybe some cocktail, make it a festive event and say, Hey, I, I want to, I got some really exciting news to share about this new film coming up, kind of make it like a celebration right. between your films and um, Rolanda's film, or excuse me, uh, Rhonda, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, between Rhonda's films and and even um, e even your uh, your your director, um, uh, Rolando. Ro yeah, uh, Rolando. Just cut together a very very short trailer, just a couple of clips of all your films, so that everybody attending that festive party can see. Wow these guys know what they're doing uh -huh. just a couple minutes uh -huh. and then you guys get up there especially you but but your director as well and talk about your vision for the film and then that's it maybe make a five ten minute presentation field a few questions the rest of the night can all be about having a good time right. yeah. i saw this done in orlando florida power is going here hope it's not a uh oh actually you know what that's a um an led light behind me so uh -huh. i told you this was live right so right, this is right, how right, we right. uh this is how we do things hang on it could be a little distracting with that uh that led light flashing so i saw this work a couple of times for um, well, I'll give you a very specific example. It was a budget similar to the budget you had. And Orlando, Florida, back in the early 2000s, was much like Atlanta. It was a booming secondary market. You had Universal Studios, Florida, M Disney, MGM Studios, Florida, and Pyramax. You had a lot of crew. You had a lot of films coming in to shoot as a location state. But you also had this burgeoning independent film market because of all the crews from like Walking Dead and these other big right. shows that are now in Georgia. Right. 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 And there was a lot of, you know, it's in the news, the Atlanta Business Journal. It's, there's no secret. There's more and more homegrown independent film like Tyler Perry's here, of course, doing his thing. And these guys had a house party and in one night, they raised over half their budget just from people oh, wow. that wow. were at the party. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a high pressured sales pitch. It was just a kind of a mm -hmm. fun gathering. And those that didn't invest, they actually got a great fan club because they were like, hey, you know, I'm really sorry. I can't, I can't put in the minimum, but I want to help you find some locations. I, you know, my cousin's got a restaurant that might work really well if you want it. Or, you know, the, the, so uh -huh. half the budget was raised in one night. And then you also had about, I, I'm guessing they were probably between 50 and 100 people at this house uh -huh. party. Right. You also had this cheerleading squad of 50 or so people that couldn't invest, but they all got behind the film. Right. 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 So that's exactly. what I would consider looking uh, into you. And then, and then I don't know if you thought about this uh, on your you're very, very smart to shoot in Atlanta right now because they still have that 30% incentive. In your so. business plan, I would consider, say, hey, we, we hope to have this 30% incentive, which on your budget would, could, could be a maximum of $150,000. Now, it might be a little bit less than that. And what we want to do is we want to take 50000 out of that incentive money and put it right back into marketing. 
And that's going to be powerful for the investors to say, hey, these guys are really taking the distribution, the marketing. And then perhaps you do the other $100,000 that flows straight back to investors. Just, just an idea. I mean, there's, yeah. there's all different ways to kind of split that, but that, that could be kind of an enticing thing too, to really strike a chord with your potential investors. Okay. Yeah, that's, I, I definitely appreciate all your pointers. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm definitely excited about it. And, you know, I'm excited about putting together my business plan and presenting it to investors. Um, I, I do have a track record. And, um, you know, so I'm not just someone that's just cold calling and, and, and without having any experience whatsoever. So, I definitely appreciate the opportunity for you to let me on the show and, you know, talk with you and, and sort of acquire your expertise, so to speak. I greatly appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm still learning as well. I learned a few things from you as well. It's really interesting about that Xenon Pictures and the first relationship. I think you and your team that you put together um, have a great track record, really, really good resumes. So, I have no doubt that you will raise the money, I think in the next few months, and I have no doubt you're make a, gonna make a great film. So definitely keep in touch. Uh, John, thank you so much for being on the show. I will let you, you know before it, uh, before it airs. Okay, thank you, Scott. Enjoy the rest of your day, bro. All Take right. care. All right. By the way, John has a really exciting project he's putting together right now. And if you wanna reach him, you can email him at john at vendetta filmworks.com or give them a shout at 803-290-1846. Thanks for listening. And remember, it's time! There's never been a better time to make your own indie film. And if you have a dream project you're excited about, and 100% committed to getting it funded, go to financeyourmovie.com and click on the green telephone button. You'll see our calendar, and if you find an open spot, grab it. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one call with me or one of my partners. It will be the best hour you've ever spent getting clarity and strategy towards financing your movie. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.